Good evening. Walter Zagarevich here, and I'm joined by Reverend Dean Turner. Welcome to Prayer for America Special Edition. Uh, good evening here in America. Good morning to you that are in Asia and uh, parts of Europe. And so we just want to welcome you this evening. I'm broadcasting from the great state of Texas. And joining me is Reverend Dean Turner, missionary evangelist who has ministered in many nations and who is in the great state of Oklahoma, not that far from, I guess, here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good evening, Brother Turner. Would you uh, say hello to the folks out there? <laughs> Well, hello, everyone. It's, it's a great privilege and an honor to be able to spend some time with you. And I believe that God really wants to do some great things in your life and that uh, we believe the anointing is going to flow. Amen and amen. And I believe that God has something very special for you tonight. With God, all things are possible. And his power is available to you who are believers in Jesus Christ. And if you are not yet a believer in Jesus Christ, well, you certainly can come to him this evening or morning, depending on where you are watching us. And again, we want to welcome those who are watching us here in the United States of America, those that are watching us in Asia, in Europe, and South America. God richly bless you. There is no distance in prayer. And while mm -hmm. we are praying here in the United States, God can and will touch you wherever you are at, whether live during this broadcast or as you watch this later during your time zone. Well, welcome again to Prayer for America Special Edition. And just take a quick moment before we really get into uh, this uh, and uh, Contact your friends and tell them Prayer for America is on. Get them on. Do a watch party or share it on your uh, Facebook uh, page so that we can get more people praying not only for America, for the nations, and for one another's needs. Well, uh, Brother Dean, uh, uh, many things have happened since you were on last uh, but God has not changed. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. <laughs> so uh, would you take it from here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I was uh, meditating and thinking about the, this evening, uh, what I can share with you, and some things begin to come into my heart. I know quite often uh, on this broadcast, we've talked about how that about the seed is being sown and about, uh, you know, the harvest comes and, you know, and sometimes things are immediately happening and sometimes they, they are not. And I began to think about that again. And, and as, as I was sitting there, uh, you know, we can always expect a miracle, okay? Whenever we pray and we ask God by his spirit to work in our lives or to work in the lives of someone else, our first thought is we expect a miracle. But we also know that the scripture is very clear. It says, you know, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, or we can send the word and they shall recover. And as I began to think about that, uh, my thoughts went back to, to, to Mark chapter four and how that whenever we are prayed for, we have to be very careful that we don't allow the things that we are hearing to affect us and cause us to jerk up the seed or dig up the seed that's been planted in our life. And as I began to think about that, I looked at some verses, and I looked at verse 15, and I want to read this to you out of the Amplified, because I think it gives a little more emphasis, and that it would be kind of interesting. And, and Brother, he's talking, Dean, Brother yes. Dean, before you read that, would you repeat that statement again? Because I think that is so powerful. A lot of people may not have caught what you just said about disturbing the seed that was planted. Can you just repeat that again? I don't know if I can do it exactly the same way. No, but, I knew the context. But, but, but what you just addressed. <laughs> right, I understand. I understand. People uh, pray, they plant that seed, and then yes. they start saying the wrong things, believing the wrong things, get, start looking at yes. circumstances. Is that what right. you're saying? 
and, mm -hmm. and they start yes. working and, and checking, well, where's that seat? Maybe I should move it around yeah. or something yeah. like, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. And it, like, for example, we've been prayed for, and we, as I know here in the U.S., we are a instant society. We think everything has to be right now and everything. And then when we receive prayer uh, for healing, especially in our bodies, we expect a miracle. Yes, that's good. That's biblical. You know, we can expect a miracle because we see God works by miracles at times. But also we know that it takes time. Sometimes it takes a period of time before you will be healed. And what happens so many times to us is that if we don't see something change immediately, it's very easy for us to start doubting that God has actually healed us. And what that does is when we start doubting, our thoughts change and we start losing our faith. And then we begin to speak the wrong words and say, well, I guess it didn't work. Okay. And when we say, I guess it didn't work immediately, we begin, we can hinder or even stop the process. And that's like we have the seed of healing has been planted inside of us. And after it's planted inside of us, if we have this problem with doubt and even unbelief, it's like jerking that seed out or like in the natural digging the seed up out of the ground to see if it's working. See, so we have to be very careful <clears throat> that we don't destroy the seed and stop the process. You know, it, it, it's like it's working. If you pray in faith and you believe and it's according to the will of God, it is working. Okay. And you can be assured that it's working. Like the scripture says, you know, if I ask something according to his will, I can have the confidence that he hears me. And if I know that he hears me, I know I'm going to have what I have asked for. So we have to be very careful that we don't dig up the seed. And here in Mark chapter 4, verse 15, Jesus is given the explanation for the parable of the sower to his disciples. And he's talking about how that the word is sown. Well, actually, when we speak the word of healing into you, that is word being sown, and it's sown into your heart. And when it goes into the heart, then Satan immediately comes and tries to pull this seed out of your heart so that you will not believe and that you'll not receive. And I like the way the Amplified puts it in. If you don't mind, I'd like to read that verse for you. Verse 15 of Mark chapter 4. The ones along the path are those who have the word sown in their hearts. But when they hear, you heard it, you received it, Satan comes at once and by force takes away the message which is sown in them. He doesn't come easily. He comes by force. He, he'll use everything he can. He will use stronger symptoms. He will use attacks in your minds. He'll use the words of others that are around you that that you uh, just begin to hear and receive all of this stuff. And if you're not careful, that's, that's the devil. He's reaching in there. He's trying to pull that seed out. See, that's his job. See, and if we allow him to do that, then we won't receive what we ask. And then I like what it says in verse 24. After Jesus gives the illustration and he gives the explanation to his disciples, it says in there in, in verse 24, and he said to them, be careful what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And besides, will be given to you who hear. What he's saying here <clears throat> is that whenever something we believe for something, for example, healing. I've been prayed for to receive healing. I have heard that and I'm listening to it. I have heard the word. I believe the truth. And then I measure it. Okay. In other words, 
I look, if I'm not careful, I'll look at the circumstances, I'll feel for symptoms or look for things. So I begin to measure what I have heard. And if I measure it the wrong way, then it's not going to benefit me, but it might even not work for me. So we have to be careful what we're listening to, because when we hear the word that's been spoken over us and it goes into our heart, then it's up to us to keep it there. And one way we keep it there is to get a guard on what we're hearing. You know, don't pay attention to the lies of the devil. Don't pay attention to your Job's type friends. <laughs> don't pay attention to your symptoms. Just say, no, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. That's going to be my measure. And when I do that, that is what is going to come into my life. So we have to protect the seed that comes in and not allow anything to distract us from that. And it's a challenge. You know, when you're hurting, it's a challenge. But we must, you know, grace of God will help us if we'll let him work in our lives. And if we will seek him with everything that we have and that we'll hold on to it because we want to receive what we have need of, but pay attention to what you're hearing. And as Brother Walter says, and I do too, watch what is coming out of your mouth because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. And if you don't have an abundance of the truth of the heart, in your heart, the seed in your heart, or even if it's just a seed that's just beginning, you know, Speak what is in there that is of truth, what is in your heart. And don't speak circumstances. Don't speak what the devil says. And don't repeat what others say about the situation. Speak the word. If you don't know what else to say, speak the word. If you don't know what else to say, practice the gift of silence. Say nothing <laughs> except praise for God. But I just want to encourage you tonight that whenever you're prayed for or whenever you hear the word, it does go into your heart. And the enemy is going to try to take it away from you, but don't let him. So tonight, when we pray for America, it doesn't matter what it looks like, okay? Because we're praying over it and we're speaking truth and we're speaking life to this country and other countries of the world. And when we speak and pray over your sicknesses and diseases that you may have at this time, it is going to be seed planted in your heart. Don't look at the surroundings and circumstances to say, no, I have received the seed and it is working in me. God, I, don't like, I didn't mean to preach. But. <laughs> oh, amen. Amen. Brother Dean, thank you so much for sharing that. That was powerful. And uh, I hope that people caught what you were saying. And I think based on what you just said, what, how important it is that we be careful, not only what we speak, but what we hear. And today, uh, there's so much negativity, especially in the news media right now, that uh, it could certainly drain your uh, energy and your faith. It could mess with your faith. Why? Because if you are not careful, you begin to allow that those thoughts and those thought processes to begin to affect what you believe and what you pray for. And it's like Brother Dean said, you begin to disturb that seed that has already been planted through your prayers and our prayers and the prayers of millions of Christians in this country and other countries of the world. God has heard those prayers and God answers prayer. Sometimes it doesn't happen when we think Think it will happen, but it will surely come. You know, like when uh, God uh, told the prophet Haggai, I believe it was, uh, right division, uh, or is it Habakkuk? Right, right. division, yep. um, it, but because it, it 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 is for an appointed time, it will not tarry, but it will surely come. And Amen. so there, it is for an appointed time, and that appointed time is not 
our appointed time, it's God's appointed time. And sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, like Brother Dean said, we're just so um, used to an instant society, especially now with instant communications and, and, and by way of phones and computers and, and so on. It is amazing the technology that we have. And so uh, we're used to, as one brother said, uh, microwaving, but God sometimes is in the business of marinating. And we don't like the marinating part. We want the Good. instant. And, and here in America, you know, people go to a doctor and, and they get a prescription for just about anything. I mean, I think things are over-prescribed, if you ask me. I mean, you know, just there seems to be some sort of pill or some sort of medicine for anything and everything. And, and perhaps sometimes to people's detriment because, uh, you know, sometimes they just get over-medicated. But the point I'm saying is that people want instant gratification. People want instant uh, results, instant betterment of their health. And sometimes there is a process. And as Brother Dean had said, there are miracles. Miracles are instantaneous. And there are healings. There is a process. It can take a few seconds. It can take a few minutes, a few hours, days, weeks, you know. But, you know, the promises of God are true and they are certain to come if we are steadfast in our faith. You know, Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. But you see, Abraham, even though he was called Abraham, father of nations, he did not have a physical son for years. And, and yet, so they'd ask, what is your name? Father of nations. Uh, and how many children do you have? Well, you know, he didn't have any yet. Well, then later he had uh, Ishmael, but that wasn't the son of promise. He tried to help God, I guess. That wasn't God's plan. And then finally, the son of promise. When, when Abraham could not produce a child, when Sarah could not produce a child, because physically uh, they were of age, 98 and 89 or 88, I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, unheard of people having children at that age. And yet that is when they, that is when God came to fulfill the promise in their lives. I mean, can you imagine that? And so, um, but it was, they had to wait, I guess, until they could see that this was God and God alone that could do this. It wasn't by the will of the flesh, so to speak, but it was by the will of God when they were quote unquote dead as far as being able to produce a child, God came through. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna to have to wait years. I'm not saying you're gonna to have to wait a day or two days. I don't know God's timing. Uh, God can reveal his timing, but he, but he has his own timetable. And so we can get frustrated because we want instant results and begin to do what brother Dean has said. We can begin to disturb that seed. Don't do that. Instead, confess God's word. Speak God's word. What do you pray? Pray God's word. And, uh, you know, people may say, well, you know, what uh, uh, you went to the doctor. What did they What did he say? Well, you can say, well, the doctor said so and so, but I believe God. I believe that by his stripes, I am healed. So we want to believe the report of the Lord. Always believe the report of God's word, God's promises. Speak God's promises. You know, uh, you know, I've prayed for many people. Brother Dean's prayed for many people. And, and, and you ask them if they believe and so on before you pray for them. And, and you pray for them. And then, uh, and, you know, and there are many cases where you see the manifestation of healing. But uh, many sometimes you talk to the same people that said they had faith before you prayed for them. And what comes out of their mouths after prayers, like, you know, like, you know, like nothing happen like they never really believe and you have to be very careful because your words my words they have power power to give life power to give death power to bless power to curse isn't that right brother dean yes sir serious uh i just thought about maybe giving a little short testimony about this timing yeah. thing you know i had a situation that i had in my body i fought some symptoms for a long period of time and you know and i would Occasionally, you know, I would pray about it and then I'd pray about it a little bit and, you know, ask for healing. And then just uh, after a time, 
my wife began to really pray seriously for me. And it was amazing how that after she prayed, things began to change, you know, and that's something that is very important that we realize and expect things to begin to change. Today, I, I am so much better than I was six weeks ago, eight weeks ago because the prayer of faith brought healing to my body, but it was a process. My body eliminated the symptoms and the sickness, and it took time. I was being healed, and today I am healed. And, see. Uh, see. So it does work, and like I said, I could have give up. That ah, I don't work, nothing like that. But there was a just a sudden, there was a manifestation, and then things began to get better and better and better. So just don't be too impatient. And I want to tell you another little secret. It's okay to pray again. <laughs> it's okay to have someone lay hands on you because every time somebody lays hand on you, they're imparting life into you and they keep imparting life to you. And that life flows in and God uses that life to heal and to deliver and to set free. You know, you know, you know, sometimes we think, well, if I pray again, it's like I, I doubted that God heard me the first time. No, you pray in such a way as that, Lord, I know, and I've asked, and I know it's coming. So, Lord, I just ask that it be manifested in my life. And then as you speak those things, and then allow the Spirit of God to work in you, and also, like I said, there's nothing wrong with having others pray for you. Because I heard it explained one time that it's kind of like a percentage. You know, the first time you pray, it's maybe 25%. Next time it pray, you pray or somebody prays, for it, it's 50%. And then you get up 25 until you know you hit 100% and it's done. See, And each person is adding to that. So don't feel guilty about asking people to pray for you. Do it because they will align themselves with you. And together you will overcome and receive life. Amen and amen. And Brother Dean, uh, we're talking about prayer. We're talking about needs. And let's pray for the people that are watching and those that will be watching later, whether they be in America, Canada, Mexico, uh, Europe, Asia. Uh, it doesn't matter, does it? Or Africa. We have people watching. And by the way, this morning I had a great time with pastors in Nepal. And, um, and, and God has touched and blessed those pastors. I mean, I was speaking from Austin, Texas, and they were all over the Himalayan mountains and in uh, different parts of Nepal, and I believe somewhere in India that were participating. You see, there's no distance in prayer. And some of you may not be able to see this right now live because of uh, your time constraints or time difference. But when you watch that same power, that same yes. anointing is going to activate healing in your body. So believe that, receive that. So Brother Dean, would you pray for people that are in need as the Lord leads you right now? Oh, Father, first, I, I, I thank you because of what Jesus did for us, that he paid the price for our healing. And then it's already a done deal. And it's already complete. So Father, tonight we send the word to those that are suffering, those especially that have been battling this COVID disease and virus is coming in. I command it in the name of Jesus, to release its hold on the people's lives. Those requests that have come in, the ones that we know of that are sick, we just send the word and we command the sickness to go, to release your hold, set them free in Jesus' name. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Those of you that might be battling cancer, I curse that cancer and that spirit of cancer in the name of Jesus, and I command it to be healed, to be removed from your bodies now in the name of Jesus. Cancer, go. Arthritis, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I command you in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus that you release your hold on people's lives. Joints, you free up. Pain, you go. 
pain I speak to you in the name of Jesus, leave their bodies. And any other sicknesses that people may be suffering, whether it's just a little minor thing or something major, it makes no difference. Jesus paid for it all. So we speak healing to every situation, to everyone that is listening to us. Because when they have tuned into this broadcast, we have connected our faith together and we can speak life into them through this broadcast because we have connected together. And because of that, the power that's flowing through us will flow through them. Now, regardless of the time they're listening to it, in the name of Jesus, I just speak life into bodies in Jesus' name. Praise God. Yes, I, I sense that God is uh, someone's watching who um, maybe now or some of you will be someone that will be watching it later, but you are watching and hearing this and you have a problem with your sight. You have a problem with your eyes. I just want to tell you that the Lord is touching you right now. Receive mm -hmm. healing in your eyes in Jesus name. Be healed. Blindness, be gone in Jesus' name right now. Uh, someone's been suffering with uh, migraines. Be healed in Jesus' name right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, someone's suffering with problems in your mouth. Uh, maybe you haven't been able to go to a dentist because of COVID. Believe right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal that mouth. Heal those teeth. Heal that abscess, I pray in Jesus' name, right now. Touch those teeth. Touch that mouth. Heal in Jesus' name, right now. Someone is just having a, a bad, stuffy nose, and, and you're having a hard time uh, even breathing because of that congestion. In Jesus' name, I command the congestion be gone, and, and nasal passages be healed, be cleared up. In Jesus' name, some may be having after effects from COVID, be healed in Jesus' name. No more brain fog, no more coughing, no more trouble in the lungs. Lungs be healed, clear up in Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. But we pray for, for your healing now. Put your faith into action. If you uh, could not lift your hand, for example, try to pick it up, not just once, but several times. That is putting your faith into action. If yes. you couldn't move your leg, begin to move it right now in the name of Jesus. If you couldn't hear out of one ear, uh, cover the good ear and try to hear out of the bad ear that was bad. Believe that you are receiving your healing right now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is right there with you right now, touching you. Some of you are sensing like a warm liquid fire coming over you. It's the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you may not be sensing anything like that, but God is healing you you anyway and the moment that you take that step of faith you will see the manifestation in your body right now in jesus name if you're praying for that for a child who is sick lay your hand on that child right now father heal that child right now at home heal that child in the hospital whose parent is praying and agreeing right now in Jesus' name, heal that mother in Jesus' name. I send your word to her. Touch her and heal her right now in Jesus' name. There's a pastor, a missionary um, uh, in, in who has been wanting to evangelize various villages in India, has been writing, asking for prayer. Father, we send your word to Brother David. Touch him. He strengthened him, anoint him with your Holy Spirit, make a way where there may seemingly be no way to preach the gospel in those unreached villages in India, in Jesus' name. Uh, we received a, a prayer request, Brother Dean, from pastors in, uh, in Cuba. Uh, the virus apparently has uh, began to take a toll again on many people, and uh, they've shut down the churches again. So, Father, we pray for the this church in Cuba. Jesus. 
We pray, oh God, for your people, your bodies in Cuba. In the name of Jesus, we send your word and we pray for healing amongst the church people, healing amongst the population. We commend that COVID virus to cease and desist. Leave in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray for the pastors. We pray for the families. We pray for their congregations. Lord, many of these pastors do not have internet connection. They do not have uh, ways of connecting with the people because not all people have telephones. And But Lord, make a way for them to be able to communicate with the people, to encourage them, to pray for them. And Father, we just send your word and move by your spirit in Pastor Odeem and other pastors situations in churches there in Havana and other parts of Cuba in Jesus name amen and amen brother Dean maybe you're sensing something just go for it yes sir oh Lord Lord I just speak protection Lord we, we yes we speak healing in the bodies but Lord we want to speak protection to where we can resist this in advance to where we are not going to allow what we hear the words of fear the words of worry am i going to catch it or not but i just speak peace into people's minds to where that they will begin to rise up and say no i am protected by the presence of god and protection in their life because if we <clears throat> begin to fear fear will open the door for the enemy to come in and to work. So we've got to shut the door. And the way we have to shut the door is to not fear, but to have faith and to resist fear. Submit to God and resist the devil of fear. And he has to go. And then speak protection over yourself. Speak protection over your family. Pastor, speak protection over your congregations. Speak life into them. And when you speak protection believe that it is working protection protect me protect my family protect my congregation and speak it and then when the thoughts of fear come in or the thoughts to say it's not working resist them cast them down tear down any strongholds the enemy tries to build into your mind and build new strongholds with the word of god and speak the peace of god Speak the life of God. Speak protection over your people. And Father, I pray protection in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And Father, we know that in the United Kingdom, they've had severe lockdowns uh, because yes. of the COVID and, and uh, some sort of new strain that uh, has come, uh, that has uh, also uh, been a uh, taking place there. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the churches in the United Kingdom that you would bless them, that you would protect them. And we pray for Brother Graham's wife, that you would touch her and heal her right now. In the name of Jesus, we send your word, touch her there, uh, wherever she is at right now, and heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe she's someplace in that Bristol area. And Father, we just send your word, touch her right now, and Jesus. heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we also pray for the pastors and churches in Nepal. Father, they are working in very severe, difficult circumstances. Yeah. We come against a COVID in that nation. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we arrest that COVID virus. We stomp on it and we put it under the feet of the body of Jesus Christ under the feet of the church and in the name of jesus christ we declare freedom from the virus protection over the body of christ protection over the pastors and their families the church congregants and their families and lord god we pray that you would bring salvation and healing into the nation of nepal and the nation of india next door and the nation of china next door on the other side in jesus name in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God. And Father, I, I, I know that there are many nations now that are under lockdown. The lockdown has come back, and they're trying to keep everybody 
sealed up and keep them from doing things. And it stops the sharing of the gospel. It stops the personal contact. Father, I ask that you will give these pastors strategy to help them during this lockdown, that they will be able to find ways to minister to your people, that they'll be able to also reach out and preach the gospel. And Father, I thank you that you're going to give them ways, you're going to give them strategies. And not only that, when they begin to step out in these strategies, they will be protected and that they will be successful. And Father, I just thank you for giving them strength. Father, I speak encouragement to them because I know many are probably experiencing discouragement because they look at the situation and the circumstances and they've had so many attacks against them that they're beginning to get discouraged. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you will send the spirit of encouragement to pastors in all of the nations that are experiencing these lockdowns and restrictions and other problems that are coming out against them, that they may be encouraged and lifted up and realize that they are doing what you have called them to do and you're, they're doing what they can do. And Father, that you are pleased with them and may they be encouraged in that to know that you're pleased with them. Be encouraged in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we lift up those in the African continent, uh, many, many needs there. And Father, we just uh, pray for those that have lost jobs, those that have lost businesses, those that have lost sources of income, that you would make new provision, especially those in the household of faith. Father, we pray for the pastors and leaders and their families. We pray for the churches. We pray for your body in Africa. We lift up Kenya, Uganda, uh, the other nations of Eastern Africa, Southern Africa, Western Africa, Central Africa, Northern Africa. And Lord God, we pray for those in the Middle East. We pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ would go forth as never before, even in nations that have been closed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for revival in America. We pray for revival in the nations of the world. World. send your Holy Spirit as a mighty rushing wind, Lord, uh, to North America, to South America, Central America, to the African continent, to Western Europe, Central Europe, Eastern Europe, to Asia, oh God, to Australia, New Zealand, and all the islands, and Lord, to Indonesia. Father, send revival. We need you, oh God. We need you here in America. Father, we have prayed and we believe believe that you are answering prayer. We know that we have asked that your plans, we believe that your plans and your purposes for this nation shall be fulfilled. And we arrest those uh, forces of the enemy, Satan, that are trying to destroy America, that are trying to cause this nation to fall into division and fall into idolatry. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we release the Holy Spirit to move and operate freely. And we declare Jesus Christ as Lord over the United States of America. Jesus Christ is Lord over Washington, D.C. Yes. Jesus Christ is Lord over every state capital, over every state and over every territory of the United States of America. Lord, we declare your governance. We declare your rulership. And we say your kingdom come. Your will be done in these United States of America. Father God, we pray for the protection of President Trump and his family. We pray for the protection of those who are in the Supreme Court, those who are in Congress. We pray that they would all bow their knees before you and admit and confess your lordship over them their lives, over their homes, over their families, and over this nation. We pray that the leaders of this nation would seek your face. And Lord, we know that as they seek your face, you will reveal your plans and purposes. And so, Father, we say your kingdom come, your will be done, and we humbly come before you. And we pray that the those in leadership in the 
the in the United States government, as well as in every state and city um, government and county level, everywhere this nation, that leaders would humbly come before you, bow their knees before you, and seek your face seek your guidance and seek your blessing upon this nation so father we thank you that you are not done with this nation we thank you that your plans and your purposes shall be fulfilled we thank you that that covenant that was made by the founders of this nation with you that that covenant is still active and real today and that that covenant is something that you remember and you cherish and we thank you that not only was this nation founded by those who love you but you also love this nation and lord we thank you that your love and your grace shall be extended to this nation we thank you that you are showing mercy to this nation and we thank you for justice we thank you for proper governance. We thank you for the protection of life. We thank you that you are working behind the scenes and that those prayers that have gone up to you that have been presented in the court of heaven, you shall meet justice and you shall do, uh, you shall meet, bring this nation to righteousness. You will bring this nation back to you. And Lord, we thank you for the answer to prayer. And I bind every principality every spirit of darkness over to Washington, D.C. and over every state capital. And I command you to loosen your hold over those in governance. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the armies of God. I release the hosts of heaven to go forth and do battle with the forces of evil in the spiritual realm for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds and I pull down the strongholds of the enemy over the United States of America over Washington DC over every state capital of the union over every territory and I break every curse of witchcraft that may have been spoken over this nation over the leadership of this nation and in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, that is broken right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I release your authority. I release you to govern in this nation. And Lord, I say your kingdom come. Your will be done in Washington, D.C. And in every state capital, every city, every town, every county. In Jesus' name. Oh God, we invite you to be involved in the governance of this nation. And we thank you that those prayers have not been in vain. We thank you that those seeds that were planted, they are rearranging the soil around them and those shoots are going to come out and they are coming out. And Lord, we thank you that justice will be met. We thank you for that your purposes shall be fulfilled. And we thank you, oh God, for that we will see that in your timing in due course we will see because lord we know you are a righteous god you are a just god and you are a loving god and you love your people and you love this nation and lord we know that you will not allow this nation to fall into sin despair as some would like to take this nation but this nation shall be lifted up shall be raised up again and lord we thank you for that revival that is soon to come we thank you for a mighty move of god we thank you lord for the healing power for the anointing of the holy spirit that will be manifested through your church through your vessels who submit to you and who seek your face who help Humbly come before seeking your guidance, seeking your direction, and seeking your power and anointing. So, Lord, we pray that you would anoint us, that you would anoint the leadership of the church in America, the leadership of the church in the United Kingdom, in Europe, in Central Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, 
in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in every South and Central American country, in the Caribbean islands, and all over the world, we release your power, I release your anointing, move by your spirit, begin, oh God, begin a Holy Spirit to flow, begin a Holy Spirit to blow that mighty wind of revival and awakening in America. America and in the Middle East and are throughout the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for moving in China. Thank you, Lord, that you are lifting up your church. Thank you, Lord, that you are protecting your church. And thank you, Lord, that there shall be a mighty move of God even greater than has ever been seen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Dean, just Lead out as the Lord leads you. <laughs> oh, you prayed so much things. Uh, Lord, help me to find something in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. But the verse that came to me is that we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay. Amen. So I want to encourage everyone, especially in our nation. You know, it was a very powerful prayer, Walter. It was wonderful. Folks, I want to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, it, it, it's terrible sometimes what we see, but we can't allow that to affect us and cause us to doubt or to fear or to get into unbelief. Because if we start doing that, we'll, we, we won't believe what we have prayed. And when we pray in faith, it is working. I'm telling you, it's working. You know, and it's because the word says it works. He says, whatever we ask in his name, he said the Father would do it for us. So we're asking for our nation. So I please, I encourage you, don't look at the circumstances, but walk by faith and believe that God is working now. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us this evening or morning uh, in other parts of the world. And share this, share this with others. Powerful prayers, powerful words of encouragement that people need to hear right now. Maybe you've thrown in the towel. Pick it up. Get back on your feet. Amen. It's not Amen. over. God yes. is not done. God is moved by his, by his Holy Spirit. Just because you don't see it, just because the media is declaring something else, just because the prophets of Baal are speaking loudly, listen to God and listen to the Holy Spirit. That is a totally different voice. Tune out a lot of that negativity. Tune out the news and focus on the Lord to, in in, 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 and pray more, study God's word. I tell you, you're going to enjoy life much more than if you just start listening to all that stuff and all that negativity that's out there to cause you to doubt, to cause you to be in division, to cause you to uh, not walk in faith, but to walk in fear and doubt. And let me tell you, if you fall into fear, you get paralyzed and you cannot do much. You begin to make uh, crazy decisions when you are in fear. Do not fall in fear. Do not fear. God is with you. God is with us. God has not forsaken the United States of America. God has great plans, and those plans include you. If you pulled out your rapture robe, uh, a robe out of the closet, put it back in there. <laughs> The Lord is not done with you. There's still a lot of work to be done. There are nations that haven't evangelized yet. They will be evangelized because Jesus said, and this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Uh, no, I'm not predicting the day that Jesus will return, but, but don't worry, it's not today or tomorrow. There's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, that isn't to say to be lax in your the way you live, but I'm just telling you, some people worry that maybe today or tomorrow, they're getting their robes ready, they're probably ironing them and cleaning them and <laughs> Uh, 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 slow down, put it back in the closet if you got, and, and, and just begin to praise God. You know, we prayed that with Brother Dean and we prayed on other broadcasts so with other people and you have prayed and God has heard those prayers. And, and so don't doubt, just begin to 
believe and thank God for the answer. Get an attitude of thanksgiving. Begin to thank God for the answer. Begin to thank God for what he is doing. You may not see what he's doing. I may not see what he's doing, but he is working. Let me tell you, he is. I can assure you that God God is working and you know you're going to be shocked you're going to be surprised when you see what God has done but you know what don't doubt don't uh, uh, don't underestimate God or his power or ability Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever I will not be able to be with you um, live tomorrow evening but um we will be um, on Sunday evening, Saturday, I will be flying back to California. Um, and uh, so we will not be able to do a live broadcast on Saturday. Uh, I, I can't do it from the year. I'm sorry. But uh, we will do it on Sunday evening at 530 Pacific, 830 East Coast time. And join us uh, God permitting, we'll be joined by Tony March Abram and Marcy Lamaki. My wife Nina will join me as well. Right now, she's just trying to keep the grandkids uh, quiet in the background while well, online right here. God richly bless you. Continue to pray for America, but don't just pray. I, I believe that we prayed and we prayed and some people may be getting weary. Start thanking God. I just sense that we're at a point. That's good. Uh, don't you agree, Brother D? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need to start thanking God in faith for what he's doing. We don't know exactly how or where or what, but God is working. Let's begin to thank him. When you thank God, God sees your faith. And that, that's so powerful. That's so important. And, you know, just getting that attitude of thanksgiving changes your perspective and changes your well-being. Let me tell you, having an attitude attitude of thanksgiving makes you even healthier you're, you're thinking differently you're acting differently and you produce good i think it is hormones if i'm not mistaken or something in your body that makes you feel better uh, just by having an attitude of thanksgiving well um be thankful to god he is working and remember all that he has done in your life. Think of all that he has done in the last several years in this country and around the world and be thankful that he is with you. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. God is with you and he's going to see us through. We're going to have great manifestations of God. We're going to see victory after victory in the name of Jesus. Remember, our battle is not physical. It is spiritual. And we have waged the spiritual battle, the spiritual war with the enemy. Let's begin to thank God for the answer and for the victory. Amen. Isn't that right, Brother Dean? Yes, sir. And I just wanted to say one more thing. We, we know yes, we've sir. been praying and asking for revival. I want you to remember something. Revival begins in you and individually. When you have a personal revival with God, it's contagious and it spreads to others. And then when all of us have our personal revival together, things begin to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. And with that, I will say uh, good night to our friends here in America. Uh, good morning to uh, those of you watching us in Asia and soon to be good morning in, in parts of in, in all over Europe. God Amen. richly bless you. Share this, share this, and share this. And um, uh, and, and do uh, also go to Brother Dean's channel on YouTube, uh, Dean and Doris Turner Ministries. And Doris Turner Ministries. Or you could find him also under... Walter Zagarevich, Global Vision Ministries, on our YouTube channel, we have his teaching in English and Nepali and English and Russian. So you can get a double blessing on those, uh, especially if you speak English and Russian, you can get it twice uh, in one <laughs> shot. It's a double blessing. Well, God richly bless you. And thank you, Brother Dean, for joining us this evening. You're welcome. And, uh, My pleasure. Let's pray for one another. And mm -hmm. if we get your request after the broadcast, we will still pray for you. God richly bless you. Have a good 
evening and join us on Sunday evening, 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 East Coast time. God richly bless you.